Hello everyone. I'm here with, I think what's going to be a pretty brief video. I um, haven't made one in a really long time because it's just been a busy, crazy summer. And um, I realized after somebody asked on one of the Facebook groups how to make a, um, a soft cover journal. And I was like, sure, I had a video of that, but I couldn't find one. So I have to make a custom order that's going to be kind of a faith, prayer, botanical nature journal. And I thought I would come on and make the cover. So what I often have done in the past is when I make covers, I get the 9 by 12 I just bought some today, um, manila envelopes, just these. So it's staples, it's a 9 by 12 it's got the clasp that you have to kind of wrestle off. And so I went in there to buy this package. And at the same time, they had these. These are 9 by 12 envelopes that are Tyvek. And I thought, oh, well, I often reinforce things with bits of Tyvek. Why don't I try just making one, a whole cover out of it? And it's a very slippery material. It's um, nine high by 12 wide to this, to this line here. So this is 12. Here, I'll show you. There's 12. And, um, so when you're folding an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, which is the U S standard copy paper, it fits in perfectly. So this is what I'm going to use today um, because Tyvek is really strong. Um, it's non tear. I'm going to cover it in fabric and it doesn't have the um, little clasp, which is also kind of a bonus because I always have to wrestle that clasp off and then reinforce it with something. So what I have picked out is some Tim Holtz uh, fabric. Um, it is Eclectic Elements. I just tore off the branding strip and of course I have shoved the branding strip somewhere and I don't know where it is. Apologize. But the Eclectic Elements um, fabric matches the Wallflower paper pads. I think all of it's been discontinued. It's very sad um, because I love both the paper and the fabrics. And I've used them extensively. So what I've done, I should say, is I did score this. I closed this up and I scored it exactly at six because that's going to be the spine. I'm going to do one signature. I think I'm going to do three whole pamphlet. I might do five, depending on how much of a struggle it is to punch this. I'm not sure. We'll see. So three holes. This is going to be my cover because I like to leave this as a closure, as a wraparound closure. And granted, it does get kind of alligatory, but this still works to, to wrap around and close it. Um, so, so I need to cover this. Keeping in mind that this is going to be the front side and that's going to be the back side. And I have this piece of fabric. Now, I, I like how this is coming out over here um, because I am going to use Mrs. Cog's um, Fine Art Women in Prayer or People in Prayer, I think it is, images in this, um, which I haven't printed out because I've been fighting with my printer again. Um, and, but I think I'm going to put an image here so I can center an image and still kind of get those eggs and maybe in some of this background, but this is a very nice kind of backgroundy print. And I love, this is actually one of my favorite images. I've seen this used a lot in places besides Tim Holtz. This is, um, you know, one of those, uh, what's it called? Copyright free <laughs> images. Um, so I just have to decide where to tear this because I, I always tear it. I actually really like the frayed edge. Um, and that's just a preference. You absolutely don't have to keep the frayed edge. If you don't like it, you can use the pinking shears to get the nice zigzag edge that doesn't fray, or you could ha seam, uh, sew a seam around it. I will wind up sewing this, um, but I will keep the frayed edge. So I am going to do, I'm going to cut this, I think just, I have my Tim Holtz scissors, you probably can't see this, but I'm just gonna make, here, 
I'll move it so you can see it. I'm just gonna make a little snip right there and voila, she is cut size. Okay, so there's that and I will glue and sew and see I've, I've, I've torn it so that there is a border around the edges and I want to do that because when I sew, it's okay to, if I sew this closed, I don't mind it if I just catch the edge, but I don't want to sew it completely closed because I actually um, use the, the fact that it's an envelope as, as a feature. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, cut down a sliver off the very edge of this envelope so that edge will be a pocket so who the person who's going to receive this um as they accumulate things that they want to keep and save they um can kind of slide it in that those pockets so it gives it a safe space to stash it until you're ready to journal with it and i'm just gonna put a little art glitter glue on the edge of that um, that flap there just to make sure, come on, it, it's closed. It doesn't, even though I'm going to, uh, sew it up. Okay. So that's that. This will now open. And then I have two other pieces that I use. This is really pretty straightforward. I have a piece of muslin. Um, granted, so this is upside down now. So this is how it's going to go. I have a um, piece of muslin for the inside that I've already torn to size like this. And I will glue all this down and then I'll sew around the edges. Um, and I actually want this to be more like that. Pretty close to this edge. And I can always snip this down later on if I don't like how it's how it's sitting um, I'm gonna pull this a little bit and then the other piece that I have is I've got a cut off of another piece of Tim Holtz fabric that has that wonderful flower and what I do is I'm going to um, stick that along the flap because I will put an eyelet in, in, in the edge of this um, after I sew it in the edge for the closure. And then I've chosen, I should say, I've chosen this plain muslin um, because I also intend to put a piece of the Tim Holtz wallflower paper on either side, on the front and the back. I don't always do that with the middle envelopes, but this Tyvek is particularly soft and squishy, and I think it'll just give it a little bit more um, of a cover feel to it. It'll still be fairly flexible, so it can kind of wrap around it as it gets bulky, which I love that feeling of whole oh, swish. Okay, so let's start gluing. So I'm gonna position this like so and I'm going to use this is actually in here is actually three in one um, last time I tried to get Fabri-Tac I couldn't find it I can't remember if it was that I was um, at Michael's and I didn't have it at Michael's or if I was at an Amazon and I couldn't get it on Amazon or maybe it was because it was too expensive I can't remember why but I decided to go with the three in one instead. And I know like several people like Nick the Booksmith swear that it's the exact same formula and not to diss Nick because we know she's awesome, but it smells different to me. And it smells more, if it's hard, if you can believe, it smells even more like chemically, like it has a stronger smell to me. 
Um, so I don't think it's the exact same formula. I disagree, but that's based only on smell and not on performance. So probably is a little moot. Now I bought a, like a plastic spatula thing. I think I can find it now, but I want to use it to smooth out the glue. No, all right, I'm just gonna throw caution to the wind and just stick that down. Oh, well, that's nice. It really didn't come through at all, which is super fabulous. Appreciate that. Okay. Now I'm going to do the front. I shouldn't have stood it up. That was silly of me. So, how is everyone? I hope you're all well. It's been kind of a crazy few weeks here. One of our dogs died. It's just been a really busy summer. So, one of our dogs passed away. Um, he was old and sick, and we had been, you know, back and forth to the vet and back and forth to the vet and keeping him going. And then he just got to that point where he was obviously suffering and so we had to make the call which you know always happens with dogs but it's always miserable when it does and then we have been doing a tremendous amount of yard work because we did nothing during the 18 months of covid well the first 18 months of covid i should say um so we it's just been it's just been we completely cleared, re-cleared the backyard. It's not a huge backyard, but it's big enough to be a big job. And so we pulled out all the brush and cut back all the brush. And then we pulled out like decades worth of metal fencing and cleared all that area. And then we, my husband and I ourselves put up new fencing. Uh, just stockade fencing um, to keep the dog in, mostly. Ooh, I like how that looks. See how nice, like, I, I ne never iron. And because when you glue it down, it just smooths it right on out. Um, yeah, so we put up fencing. We, we had to dig the post holes and put the post in and pour cement and then put the fencing up and nail it in and it was just carrying everything back and forth because we staged everything in the driveway and then we had to carry it all the way down to the back I mean it was it was a huge job and then I also built a water garden uh oh what did I do with my pre-measured is this it my pile of mess over here um I also built a water garden out of a galvanized stock tank. And yes, if you're a water gardener, I know you're not supposed to put fish in galvanized stock tanks, but I have seen a lot of mixed information about that. Some people have had success. All right, so I've measured this the right length and then I have tapered it down a little bit so that I can slide it in here. I'm just deciding right now how much of the feather do I want to see because I am going to put I think I'm going to tuck it in just like that um, okay so back to the stock tank it's a galvanized metal stock tank it's about 150 gallons I'm gonna rip that off there but I'm also going to glue it um, and I have made a biofilter out of another galvanized tub. I have not coated them or lined them, and I don't have fish in them yet. But my understanding is that people have had success with them if you don't put the um, fish in right away and you allow some algae to grow on the edges to stabilize it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to wait that long. I'm pretty impatient. 
and um, I'm just going to get goldfish. I'm not going to get fancy koi or anything like that. Okay, I need to pull this down a little bit so I have some, whoops, it's already stuck. All right, so be it. Okay, so I've got that in there. And then I'm just going to do a little bit down in here so it doesn't be all, isn't all flippy floppy. Um, and I have some water plants in there and I have a, um, a pump that pumps the water from the bottom of the stock tank up into another galvanized tub that is pouring into the stock tank. And the water that gets pumped up into this tub goes to the bottom of it and it's directed in a swirling motion. And it, there's a layer of big rocks at the bottom and then a layer of filter material and then a layer of medium-sized rocks and a layer of filter material and then a layer of gravel. So any water that gets to the surface and spills out has gone through all those layers. Um, and it's inoculated with good bacteria from the potted plants that I bought. So that bacterial will help to work to filter out particulates and, and nitrogen and um, stuff from the, from the stock tank. So when I get the fish in, it'll be a whole little mini ecosystem all into itself. And I'm very excited about it. If I can figure out how to be clever and insert pictures, I might, but I'm very bad at editing. I don't know how to do it. I don't have the proper software. Um, so yeah, so the yard is done. The water garden's done. We want to build some raised beds and get them established for the spring. We have a greenhouse. Um, and it's just like a lean-to greenhouse. It's a curve that we have to get some plastic for so that we'll be all ready to start things ourselves in the spring. So yeah, so it's been super busy. Um, okay, other, the last fabric layer goes here, like so. And I'm gonna glue this down and then I will go over to my sewing machine and sew around it. Okay, so that looks good to me. I have just a little bit of an edge here. Um, this, of course, won't get sewn because I would sew the pocket closed and I want this to be a pocket. Um, but I will, so when I pick my papers to put over this, I will sew around them so I'll get some faux stitching. This edge and this edge and around the flap will get really sewn, not fake sewn, truly sewn, for real sewn, sewn sewn. Okay. All right, so I'm going to glue this side down. Keep putting my cover on and standing this up before I'm finished. And then let's see, it's late afternoon here and my husband and son have gone um, to meet with someone they found on Facebook Marketplace because my son who's um, 17 now, almost 18, has decided he wants to try bicycling to school. Um, so he, they've gone to look at a used bicycle that they found on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or something. And I spent the better part of the day planning and prepping for school next week. School starts next week for us. So I, we're, we're gonna be in person I was all hybrid last year. I mean, sorry, all remote last year. Um, so we're gonna be in person, uh, but the rates, as you all know, are very high and they're rising and they're predicting they're just going to keep rising. And the town that I work in um, has a lower rate of immunization than the rest of the state. 
they're at only about 50 percent whereas the town that i live in is at like 85. Um, so i'm going to still be doing a lot of digital lessons um, and so i'm teaching two sections of anatomy and physiology i'm teaching a section of um, topics in marine science which is like an advanced course and a section of forensic science and the anatomy and physiology and uh, forensics i did last year so i have all kinds of digital stuff ready to go but the topics in marine science i haven't taught since we were in person so i've got to you know adapt all of those lessons for um computer fully based computer stuff uh, so I, I did that for the first few days so i've got like the first few days completely set and i've got my plan book all set with all of the important dates written in so that part of my mind that was swirling in anxiety about the start of school has been somewhat appeased. <laughs> See how that just spreads out so nicely? So this is just um, a really inexpensive muslin that I bought off of Amazon. And this will go like this. I might even, what do you think? Do I trim that? I might, I think I'll trim that up just a smidge. So when I trim it, I'm going to anticipate that I want the frayed look. So I'm not gonna trim exactly to the matching edge. I'm gonna move out just a bit so that I can pull some strings um, to make it look frayed. Because I don't wanna tear it at this point because if I tear it at this point, I'm liable to mess it up. Okay, so there's that. We had a hurricane this past couple days, but um, it really didn't amount to much. It kind of fizzled out and became a tropical storm. So yeah, so we, we ran around um, like chickens with our heads cut off for, for 24 hours. My son and I went out to our sailboat and we took off the boom and we took down the jib and we took the outboard motor off and lashed it to the inside and we um, uh, had to uh, put another line that goes from the mooring to the boat and we tie it around the mast in case the cleats give way. So that got all that done and thankfully, thankfully it fizzled out and it turned out to be nothing um, too terrible. Nobody's boats broke away because that's a, that's the worry. You can be really good and responsible and batten your boat down and tie it up as best you can. But if somebody else's boat breaks off and slams into yours, it's a bummer. So it all all's well that ends well. It's supposed to actually come back around this evening. Like it went off to the west and it's supposed to then swirl back around and get us again with a bunch of rain tonight but so far it's actually been quite a nice day all right oh that's cute I like how you can see the little nests and eggs there I don't think I'm going to trim that because I'm going to sew that and that is where I am for the cover right now so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to sew along here along the edge of the um the flap and then back down here and I'm going to be trying to stay right in this area I'll do zigzag and I might catch the corner the edge of the envelope which you can see pretty nicely with this um, and that's okay I don't mind catching the corner I just don't want to like inhibit the the edges too much so I'm going to do that and then I will come back briefly and show you how that looks and I'll put the eyelet in and we will move on from there. So I'll be right back. Hello, I'm back. So I have sewn 
I sewed around this edge, then around the flap, and then back down around the bottom edge, and then I did a back and forth at the bottom there. So, it actually feels quite nice. I think this, this can you hear that? I think this is going to have a really lovely feel and sound to it. It has a very different feel from the manila envelopes. I really like this. And it, the pack of Tyvek was a slightly more expensive than the paper manila envelopes. But, ooh, I really like it. Okay, so I need to put an eyelet kind of in the center. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. So right over the 10 there is kind of the center. And this is my jar of eyelets. I have a magnet in the top so that I can stick it to the um, shelf bracket that holds the shelf that's above you. Um, and I generally use these these large um, larger ones. So they come in, uh, oh, I kind of like that for this. Um, they also come in this, oh, that's the same color. They come in like a gold, a brighter gold, but it looks like maybe I've used those up. And it comes in the coppery color. I think it comes in like a black, but I don't apparently, oh, here's, here's that bronzy bit, which I often go for that bronzy bit. Here. Oh, there's a gold one. Hold those up so you can see them better. The four colors. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. So there's like the coppery one, which I don't think I'm going to use. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's a little too blendy. There's this kind of patinaed one. Um, I'm not going to use the bronzy bit. Can you see the difference between those? This is a darker and that's kind of a bronze. I think either one would work. But I like how the darkest one goes with the, the words, the nests and eggs. So I think I'm going to use that one. And I have both the handheld crocodile and the levery crocodile. But I think I'm going to use, oops, that's not a crocodile. That's a corner rounder. I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to use the bigger hole. And I'm going to try and make a hole right at the 10. Because that's what I said. I'm going to pull that in right there. Yeah. And sometimes the fabric doesn't... Hmm. I don't know where my tiny scissors are. There we go. And then I have this set to four. Oh no. This is on... Ugh. I think I can read that. I can't read what that's. I think it's one on the bottom. Come on, you. And A. I'm using A1 to set this. So I'm gonna put the flat bit on the outside. Ugh. And then I'm going to give it a squish. And voila! I have a nicely set eyelet. Sometimes I'll go in, especially if it's near the edge like this, and I'll just take my needle nose pliers that I use for jewelry dangles and beads and things and give it a little extra squish and there we go so as i said i'm going to pick out some papers 
do some faux stitching around the edges, stick those on, and I will find um, the image that I use for this front and a bit of either sari silk or seam binding for the closure. And that will be my cover. And I, at the moment, I intend to take you on on those next steps, um, but I make no promises because life is crazy, but I will try. Um, thank you much for joining me and I hope you are all safe and well, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.